Hi, my name is Captain Lane Wagner of Hawk One Charters. I've been a captain for over 40 years. I've fished all over the world, and now I'm up here in Long Island, New York. You can find me online at Hawk One Charters, www.hawkonecharters.com. And I'll be talking to you today about saltwater fishing. Weather conditions, tidal conditions, moon phases all have a lot to do with fishing. Freshwater and saltwater. But in saltwater, the weather plays a great role. Uh, you have to be aware of which way the wind is blowing, which way the tide's going, so you can set up your boat the proper way to handle those conditions. You have to be able to put yourself over the fish in order to catch them. Otherwise, you'd just be out there spinning your wheels, so to speak. You can leave the dock. It'll be sunny and 80 degrees. By the time you get to your fishing area, it's blowing 10, 20 miles an hour. What are you going to do? Are you going to turn around and go back? Well, I wouldn't. What you have to do is know how to handle these conditions. You have to put your bow into the winds, see which way the boat's going to go, if it's an incoming tide, you're in great conditions if the wind's going with you. If it's wind against tide, it's a very tough conditions. You just have to learn the proper ways of handling different conditions to be able to have a successful day on the water. I'm going to show you now is a conventional reel. Okay? The difference being you have to really uh, control this reel. Grab it differently, just open your hand, put it like that, and thumb on the spool. Then throw this lever, now you're in free spool. That means if you take your thumb off, this spool is going to move because of your sinker, your weight at the other end. The same casting motion, take your left hand, put it on the butt, take it, put it back, then at one o'clock, release the spool but keep pressure on it. Because if you don't, it's gonna be a mess. That's how you cast a conventional reel. What I'm going to show you right now is how to uh, cast a spinning reel, an open face reel. Number one, how you hold it, split your fingers like Spock, put it right here, right on the handle. Make sure the line, the bail, this is called the bail, straight up and down like that. Put your pointer finger, grab the line. Put the bail back. Next thing, put your left hand on the butt of the pole, take it back, and then you release your finger when the pole gets to one o'clock. So it's in one motion, release, and it's casted. It is real, and that's it. To get started in saltwater fishing is very simple. Just have the desire and uh, the ability to get to a boat and try it. A party boat is an excellent place to get started because you don't have to own any equipment. They supply the rods, the reels, the bait, and it's a safe environment with mates that will teach you and explain things to you. Mostly you're gonna start with fluke. It's a bottom fish, lives in bays and outside in the ocean, but it's very easy to get to by these party boats. You don't have to worry about a thing, but that's all it takes to go fishing. Have a desire, uh, the nerve to get started, and pick a boat to go fishing on. An important part of fishing is organization. It saves you time, and when you need your stuff, you know where it is. Nowadays, they've come up with these neat plastic containers that keep your tackle dry and organized. So let's say we're going striped bass fishing and we want our artificial lures. There we go. Everything's got a place. And every place has its thing. There's more here. These are all striped bass. Then we go, let's say we need a bucktail. Another lure, here they are. Different weights, the light, medium to heavy, to real heavy. Then from there, let's say I need sinkers. I need diamond jigs. 
I need other kinds of chains. My weights. Everything is separate and organized. And they stay, all you have to do is snap them closed. And then they all fit in a nice dandy tackle bag where they all stack. These are called stackers. And you just put them in. Zip it up, take it over your shoulder and go. Very simple. This is called a soft tackle bag, not like the old hard tackle boxes. And these you can carry 10 times the amount of tackle that you used to be able to carry. When picking a charter boat captain, here's a tip for you, coming from a charter boat captain himself. Find somebody, ask you a lot of questions, your abilities, what type of fishing you like to do, how good of a fisherman are you, uh, are you looking for a half a day or a full day, what type of fishing you want to do. What you have to do is put a little investigative work into it. Go online, use the phone book, find a bunch of charters and ask them questions. If you're a beginner, do you take out beginners? Do you have equipment? Do you go for this kind of a fish? If you're an experienced fisherman and you want to target a certain species, ask the captains, do you target this species? They come in all different price ranges, all different types of boats. Find one that you feel comfortable with talking to. If he answers the questions properly for yourself, then I'm sure you're gonna find somebody that'll show you a good time on the water. What we have here is an assortment of saltwater fishing gear, and I'm gonna show you and explain a little bit about each one. This is what I use, it's ultralight. It's good for children to start off with, young children, for snappers, very light action, very light to the hold, very light line. Next one is still in the light, but not ultra light. This is my personal favorite for fluke and inshore fishing. I'm a light tackle specialist, so I always like to use light tackle. This one's a six foot pole, light action, little larger reel, mono line, spinning. Next one's a little larger. These are all spinning reels, by the way. It's a little larger, a little heavier line, a little more backbone to the pole. Used for the same fish, a little heavier action. Here's another one, seven foot spinning reel, a little heavier fishing, stouter rod, used for uh, inshore and a little offshore light tackle. Now we get into the conventional reels. This is an inshore one. This is more for bottom fishing or casting a lure or bait. This one has more control of a fish than a spinning reel for the novice. This is the same kind of a reel, it's called conventional, but this is much heavier action, used for bigger fish. There are three basic knots I like to teach beginning fishermen. Here's another knot I'm going to teach you today. It's called the cinch knot. Using it like it did before, visual aid, before I show you how to do it on a hook. Take your line, put it through the eye of the hook. Pull about eight inches through, loop it around, five times. Take the tag end, put it through the loops that's made. You always have to remember to wet your line before you tighten the knot, otherwise the friction will weaken the knot. Then just pull it through, tightens down, and there is your cinch knot. Take your fish line, put it through the eye of your hook, pull about six inches. Then take the tag end, and loop it around the main line five times. Two, three, four, five. Take the tag end, put it through the loop it makes at the beginning by the eye of the hook. Pull down, there's your cinch knot. There are three basic knots I like to teach beginning fishermen. The first one I'm going to show is the Palomar knot. I'm going to use the visual aid before I show you how to do it on a hook. First, you double up your fishing line. Imagine this is fishing line. Put it through the eye of the hook. Make a loop like that. Now take, make an overhand knot, a simple overhand knot. When you have the overhand knot, there's a loop you made. Put the hook through it. And simply pull down on it all until it slides in tight. And there's your Palomar knot. Very simple knot. 
take your tag, take your line, put it through the eye of the hook, and come back, put it through that eye again. You need about, oh, I'd say, six, eight inch circle. Once you have the circle, make an overhand knot. It's not as easy as it looks, but boom. Take the circle it's made, put the hook through it. Make that just pull down like that. Now what I'm gonna say is if you when you're on your boat, make sure you moisten the line. Otherwise, it'll weaken it. There's your Palomar knot. There are three basic knots I like to teach beginning fishermen. Here's another knot I'm going to teach you today using it like it did before, visual aid, before I show you how to do it on a hook. Take your line, put it through the eye of the hook. Pull about eight inches through, loop it around five times. Take the tag end, put it through the loops that's made. You always have to remember to wet your line before you tighten the knot, otherwise the friction will weaken the knot. Then just pull it through, tightens down. Take your fish line, put it through the eye of your hook, pull about six inches. Then take the tag end and loop it around the main line five times. Two, three, four, five. Take the tag end, put it through the loop it makes at the beginning by the eye of the hook. Pull down. I'm sitting on the deck of my 25 foot sea chaser, Bay Flats boat. Uh, I use this boat uh, for inshore waters when we're fishing uh, backwater fluke, striped bass, weak fish, and any assortment of fish. Uh, the reason that this boat excels is that it's able to go in shallow water. It's equipped with a 225 horsepower outboard engine. It has a depth finder fish finder on board so we can actually see how deep we are, where the fish are, the bottom structure. It's also equipped with a GPS unit which will actually just be able to tell you where you are at any given point within a three foot radius. Uh, this way you're not going to get lost at night because you can actually see where you're going in the dark by trusting your electronics and following the track that you put in on it. Uh, the reason why I use this boat uh, for my clients is because it's a totally open boat, wonderfully equipped for fishing. It goes in shallow water, it has low draft and all open space, so you can cast without any worries. It's all safety equipped, has a live well, a trolling motor in the front, full electronics, all gauges, and there's no obstructions here. Plus, you can get in out of the rain uh, under my uh, T-top. It has what we call rocket launches up up top, where we put four poles, two rod holes on the outside, and six on each, three on each side to keep them out of the way. It's an excellent boat for saltwater fishing. We're up north here in Long Island and I put it on my trailer and I take it down to Florida in the winter. This boat goes with me everywhere I go.